So far, our application has only been making get requests. So we've only been sending requests to retrieve data and then display that data somehow. So let's see how we can make post requests. In our user service, to make a post request, it's gonna be very similar. So we're gonna define a function and then we're gonna call the post on the HTTP this time. Now notice that the name of the function is different. So we give it an appropriate name since we're trying to create resource. And also we're passing in the payload that we're gonna send with the body of the request. So you can see here, we're passing in a user and then we pass that user as a second argument to the post function so you can see with the post we pass in the url and then we pass in the payload or the request body so it's going to be very similar to the get the only thing is we're going to use a different method so since we're making a post request so it's going to be a post and then we're also passing in the payload as you can see here we make the method or the function take the payload and then we pass that payload as a second argument to the post. Now there's more arguments that you can pass into the get function or the post function, but for now, the only other argument that we're gonna pass with the post request is just the payload that we're passing in and the request body for the backend to use it and then create that new resource on the server. Another thing I wanna point out is that you can see that this function is returning an observable of user, which is the user that will be created on the server. Whenever you're trying to use an API, you have to go through the documentation so that you can understand exactly what's gonna happen when you make certain requests. So I'm just putting this here because this API that we're using, the JSON placeholder, it's gonna send us back the data that we create on the server. It might be possible that on a different web service or a different API, they might send you a different type of data. So it might not be the data that you just created. It can be a Boolean that lets you know if the call was successful or not. It can be like some code. So it depends on the API, but typically whenever you create some resource on the server, the server will send you back the resource that you just created as a response or as the response body in the body of the response. And one other thing to notice is that whenever we send this request and we send the payload, so let's say the user looks like this, right? So we have a user object, which is the payload or the request body, and then we're gonna send it with this request, right? So we want to create this user with a simple name and then a gender. So usually when servers create resource, they usually associate a unique identifier with that resource. So a typical response would look like this. So whenever we send the request, we send the name and the gender, but the response might look like this. So in the response, you see we have an additional property on the object itself, and that's the ID. And that's because whenever the backend or the web service is saving some data or creating some data, it usually associates that data with some ID so that later when you need to retrieve that data, then you can pass in that ID and then retrieve that specific data. And that can be an ID or any unique identifier and if this data is being saved in a database, then it's usually the primary key or some unique identifier that you can use to target that specific resource or on a file if the data was saved in a file. So let's go ahead in the code and give this a try. 